This video is part two of topic nine where we're looking at applications of differentiation. This question is such a common exam question, such a common assignment question, particularly part B, and students always get part B wrong. So let's start off. It says find the time the wheel takes to come to rest. The wheel is at rest when V is equal to zero. So that means we need to find V. V is the derivative now, 10 pi is a constant, so the derivative of a constant is 0. Derivative of 24t will be 24 and minus 6t. And we need to make that equal to 0. And that gives us that time is equal to, rearrange that, time is equal to 4 seconds. So it takes four seconds to come to stop. Now, the second part of the question says, find the angle turned in the last second. Now, the last second is going to be the, the time that it's moving between t equals 3 and t equals four seconds, because that's when it stops at four seconds. So the last second is between when t equals three and t equals four. So all we need to do is we need to find theta when t is four and subtract from that theta when t is three. So it's just a calculator problem at that state put four into the original, put three into the original and subtract. And the answer is three. Don't forget you will need a, a unit. All of these questions are the same. You need to find the distance function, you need to find the velocity function. So the velocity function is the derivative, so it'll be 2 pi cos 2 pi t. And we need to find that when t is a half. So plugging in t is a half using a calculator, then the final answer will be negative 2 pi meters per second. Need to find the acceleration. So the acceleration function will be 2 pi times 2 pi, which will be 4 pi squared. Now the derivative of cos is negative, so put that out the front, sine 2 pi t and we have to find that when t is a half so that'll be sine of mm, that's just going to be zero and that's fine initial velocity for part a that's where t is equal to zero so we're just going to put t is equal to zero in the function. We're going to put t in our velocity function. We need to find the velocity function. So the velocity function is going to be 100 minus 50 over 2 t. Now we're going to put t equals zero into that. So our initial velocity is 100 meters per second. The second question says find the time when the height is at the maximum. The height is at the maximum when the velocity is equal to zero. So it's a matter of solving 100 minus 25t, so t would equal 4 seconds. Mm -hmm. 
and the third part says find the maximum height you know what t is you know that t is 4 so you're going to put t is 4 into the original function that'll give you um, 100 times 4 minus 25 over 2 times 16 which will give you that the the distance oops that's the wrong line that the distance was equal to 200 and then the last part says what's the velocity when the missile hits the ground well when the missile hits the ground we know that the distance the height is zero. So all we have to solve is 100 T minus 25 over 2 T squared equals zero. And we're going to get T is equal to eight seconds and then we can put 8 back into the original velocity statement our velocity statement was 100 minus 50 over 2 times t and that will give us that v equals negative 100 meters per second now all that negative means is that it's going downwards we could have done that slightly differently. We could see from part B that it reaches its maximum when t equals 4. So we could figure out then that if it's up, if it takes 4 to get up, it's going to take 8 in total. So we could have worked out the t equals 8 seconds by just this question is the same or very similar to the one that we did earlier. Again, the trick is the kilometres per hour, whereas the question is given in terms of seconds. And you just have to convert your final answer to kilometres per hour. And then find the, the distance when the car stops, remembering that when the car stops, V is equal to zero. So the initial speed is 90 kilometres per hour and the distance that it travels before it stops is 62.5 metres. This question is the same as all the others. You need to find the velocity, you need to find the acceleration, you find the, the velocity by differentiating, you find the acceleration by differentiating. Again, the only problem is the, the negative sign and there. You just need to be a little bit careful about that. And then remember that the initial velocity means when t is equal to zero. And so finding your velocity function and subbing in zero, you would get that your initial velocity was three meters per second. And that your acceleration was negative one meters per second squared. And do the same at 150, then your velocity is equal to six. And your acceleration is equal to negative 4. Meters per second squared. Find the time when the velocity is zero. You've got a velocity function. You're simply going to solve when that is equal to zero. So you get your answer then is t is equal to 3 over 4. All the questions are the same. And again, all you've got now is that the distance that it's travelled is going around a circle. To find the angular velocity, this is omega, but it's just the derivative. So it's the derivative of whatever it is that's moving. So finding the derivative would be 6 times a quarter, which would be 6 over 4 cos t over 4 
and then you would find the acceleration function by just differentiating that again. This time the derivative of cos is negative, so it would be a quarter times 6 over 4, so it would be negative 6 over 16. And then it's just a matter of putting in the numbers. The part C, the first time when the velocity is zero, you need to solve where omega is equal to zero. And that means when six over four cos t over four is equal to zero. So solving that, t is equal to two pi seconds. This question is also a differentiation question because it's talking about the rate of change. It says, find the rate of decay, rate of change, find the derivative. So you need to find the derivative of n so it's going to be 6 times 10 to the 15 times negative 0 0.02 times the original like that and you're going to just put in t equals 1.6 so the answer would be negative 1.16 times 10 to the 14 You need to think about the unit here. It's radioactive decay, so that would be atoms per second. And it makes sense that it's negative because it's decay. It's rate of change, so it's derivative. So you need to find the derivative of i with respect to time. So it's going to be, the only bit you can differentiate is the v squared, so it would be 2v times 4, so it would be 8v times 10 to the power of negative 4. And you just need to find now, what do we need to find? Determine the voltage at which the light is increasing at a rate of 0.6 candelas per volt. Okay, so they've told us di by dt. What we've now got to solve is that 0.6 is equal to that. So we've now got to find V And V is going to be 750 volts. Some lamp. Trick in this question is it's 20 milliseconds, where actually the time is in seconds. So you've got to change 20 milliseconds into seconds. Uh, 0 0.02. Like that. Okay, so I need to find the rate of change. That's the derivative. So from our original, it says 2 pi f. Well, f is 150, so 2 f would be 300. So now we have to differentiate that. So it would be 10 times 300 pi. The derivative of sine is cos. And 2 pi f we put back in again as 300 pi t. Okay, we just have to put in there when t is equal to 0 0.2. 
0 0.02, sorry. And then our rate of change. is going to be, putting 0 0.2 in there, will be 3000 pi. And that will be amps per second. More of the same. This question, if we look at the, the rule, the, the voltage is given by VE to the negative T over CR. It might, make a good, it might be a good idea to find CR. CR is equal to 0 0.48. So the derivative is just going to be negative 1 over CR times V times E to the negative T over CR. Now, CR is 0.48, so negative 1 over 0.48 will be negative 625 times e to the power of negative t over 0.48 and doing a bit of more number crunching then that's equal to negative 625 e to the negative 2.083 because 1 over 0.48 is equal to 2.0833. Now, trying when t equals 5, t equals 0.5, then the rate of change is, well, we need to put in t equals 0.5, so it becomes negative 2, 2, 0.54 and that's volts per second we need to think for a minute if that's sensible yes it is because voltage dissipates so it's a, a decay it's decrease this question requires you to find the velocity which is the derivative of the distance function and then find that when x is a half and again when x is 2. When you find it when x is a half, it's 1 meter per second, and when x is 2, it's negative 2 meters per second. The difference in the answers must be that the, the body that's moved has actually just changed direction. When the body is at rest, the body is at rest when v is 0, so you've got a velocity function, the velocity function the velocity function was 2 minus 2t. Two and when the body's at rest, that's going to be equal to 0. So solving that gives you t is equal to 1. What is the acceleration after 2 seconds? You need to find the acceleration. The acceleration is the derivative of the velocity, so it's negative 2. Now, that means it's actually a constant velocity, so no matter what the time is, the acceleration is going to be negative 2 metres per second squared. Nice easy question to start with. How high is it after 10 seconds? That just requires you to substitute 10 into h, and you get the answer then of 3,600 metres. B. The time it takes to reach the maximum height, okay, the maximum height is when your velocity is zero, 
So we need to solve that. So let's find our velocity. Our velocity function is 600 minus 48t. And that's going to be zero when t is 12 and a half. Then you need to find the greatest height. So sub 12 equals, sorry, sub t equals 12.5 into the original. And you get that the height is 3750. So just having a look at a bit of a picture of that, it's like that. So there's your maximum at 3750 there, and that's 12 and a half seconds. And then at 10 seconds, we're back here. And that was 3,000. meters. The last question is just like all the others, you've got to find the rate of change, so you need to find the derivative. And the derivative is going to now p naught is a constant. Times negative one over c e to the negative h over c. And we know actually that's dp. It's not p zero. That's just dp. And we know what P naught is, we know the orig original pressure. So it's just now a matter of putting the, the, the bits in that we know. So it would be 1.013 times 10 to the 5 times negative 1 over C, and C is. 6.05 times 10 to the 4 times e to the power of negative 1450 over, well, 6.05 times 10 to the power of 4. And providing you haven't made a mistake, that's now just a measure of putting in your calculator 1.6347.